Right, next in our player series, and probably the uh, easiest of the lot, is Thomas Suchek. Now, before I start on this, um, obviously so many of you, you leave comments on the videos. We've actually got a Slavia Prague fan who left a comment on, on a video about Suchek himself. And um, I just want to read it out to you. Obviously, some of you will have read it anyway. Um, I, his name is something like... Um, Kovo the, the Blood Lord or something like that. I can only assume that's not his real name. Um, let me just have a have a little look. Oh, sorry. Kovo the Bloodless. I, I guess it's not... It can't be right. He's obviously got to have some blood. Otherwise, it'd just be like a... Well, like a sack of skin. Wouldn't you? Anyway. Um, Kovo has said to me... Uh, He's seen a little bit, a bit too much hysteria from West Ham fans online. He says, I'm a Slavia Prague fan, so keep an eye out for our former captain. He's seen all of the West Ham games so far, and you sure still have a way to go. But there have been hints of greatness. I'm sure it will eventually come. He, you just need to make sure you stay up, which we have now since the video was done. Um, he says he's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen, maybe as much as Nedved, minus the flair. Um, but he has massive amounts of kilometres run. The most in the Champions League last season. But, OK, well, that is that is that right? I don't disbelieve it, by the way. Um, that he covered most metres or kilometres, should we say. Whatever distance it is, he covered more of it than anyone else in the Champions League. That's amazing. In the Czech League, he, he, was, the hard, he was the furthest runner. And in the Euro qualifiers. He said he has a huge aerial presence, both offensively and defensively. He's always in the right spot. He's able to score goals and make clearances, he said, and just wait until he gets shooting. He has some finishing ability. Uh, he then goes on to say, sign Alex Crow, who we sent to Russia, and your midfield is sorted. Um, don't know about Alex Crow, so uh, I, I, I couldn't possibly comment. But, I mean, that's a hell of an endorsement. That's an endorsement from, um, from a Slavia Prague fan. And it's not like it sounds unrealistic these are characteristics that we already know that a player has we know he's he's aerially dominant we've seen it um this is a very very shrewd acquisition and i don't know if you've been well i guess you have been listening to the commentary because you haven't been to the games if you don't listen to the commentators you're not watching the games a lot of the whenever he's mentioned uh the commentators seem to say uh, and west ham have got an option to make this guy's move permanent so we paid Three odd million as a loan fee, and it's another 13 million to make it permanent. And the general consensus has been when people have been commentating on our games that that's a bargain. I do think it might be a bit of a steal. I really do. You might not like the style of play. I mean, you, I just mean, you know, one, one might not like your style of play, but you've got to have, you can't have a team full of Lionel Messi's. You need somebody to win the ball. You need somebody to head it. You need someone to tackle. You need someone to run. Every facet of the game of football has got to be covered when you sign a player. Um, and you're never going to get that all in one player. So you, you sprinkle it out throughout the team. Um, but I do not think it's beyond the realms of possibility that next season, Thomas Suchek could score between eight and ten goals for us. Now, we don't... Not too often do we get someone scoring eight or ten league goals for us, let's be fair, in the last few seasons. Maybe one or something like that. But bearing in mind, that's not the striker. That's a midfielder. That's a hell of a return for a midfielder. I know he's not done it yet. But I don't think it's... I think, I'm sure you'll agree. I don't think that's unrealistic to say that over a course of a full season. If he stayed fit, he could provide eight or ten goals. That's a hell of an asset. It really is to have in your team... Um, it doesn't matter whether he ain't got a passing ability of Paul Pogba or this, that or the other. For a team like West Ham, which is a relegation struggling team that's at the moment aspiring to become mid-table, because that's where we are, that's a realistic position, that's a hell of a player. That is a hell of a, a bow to have in your... That's not right, arrow to have in your bow? I don't know, you know what I mean. Pistol to have in your arsenal. Milk to have in your cornflakes. I don't know. You know what I mean. It's a benefit. It's something nice to have. The the distance covered is is huge. I already know that um, since the restart that he's been he's covered more distance than anybody else. That's amazing, right? In the Premier League. So with that in mind, and bear it in mind, we even knew before that his running stats were good. I think it's perfectly um, believable what what the chap says there that he is uh, he was the run the hardest in the Champions League, in the Euro qualifiers and in the Czech League. Got no reason to dispute that. We actually have evidence to support it. The shooting from distance, 
Well, that's interesting. Bear in mind, I, I, everything else that that guy said is true. I've no reason to disbelieve that. We have to take him at his word. He's right about the heading. He's right about the running. Um, that'll be interesting if he starts shooting from distance as well. Uh, Declan Rice might have something to say about it because Declan Rice is, um, has, uh, has scored a goal. It, that's if he's there next season. We'll be doing Declan Rice video. will be along at some point. Maybe I won't wait too long to do that one. Um, What's impressed me of Suchek, aside from all that, as I've said before, has been his attitude on two occasions. One of them was actually with, I think, the Slavia Prague YouTube channel. He very much said, because um, my check is very good, I understood what he said, of course. Uh, he said, um, I, whilst I love this club, uh, I really want to go back and play for West Ham. I want West Ham to survive relegation. I want to play for them in the Premier League. Um you know, and said all the right things. Obviously, my heart is here, and with Slavia Prague, I'll always be, and, you know, all, all those things that you'd expect him to say, and, and rightly so. That's his hometown club. It would be, be weird if he left there and said, I hate them. You know, quite right, and I'm sure he hopes to go back there one day. It's exactly as it should be. But for him to say to his hometown club, look, you know, I really enjoyed my time here, but now it's time for me to move away, and I want to do that at West Ham. And then he went and, and reiterated it in a separate vi uh, video as well. How, how often do we see foreign players, they go back to their home country and then they do an interview um, in their own language and then they, they say things that are perhaps not complimentary about where they are and then it comes back and they just say, oh, it was something was lost in translation. I don't think anything's lost in translation anymore. There's plenty of people who are perfectly adept at speaking um, multiple languages, but he, he just comes across as he basically wants to be at West Ham. He wanted to stay at West Ham and you really felt that that player did everything he possibly could from the moment lockdown ended and um, football was allowed back on to the end of the season or until we were uh, safe at least did everything within his power to make sure West Ham stayed up and and aside from the heading and the, the tackling and the running and, and, and the goals and so on and so forth just to have someone in your team in a relegation battle who is w willing to run through brick walls and has that determination to in, and desire to ensure that your club stays up is massive. Because when I looked at Norwich, I know, yes, Norwich were sort of, they weren't technically down, we sent them down, but they were down anyway. When I looked at their team, I didn't feel there was anyone there that did that. I didn't feel there was anyone in the Norwich team that was that was desperate to keep Norwich up, that was ready to run through brick walls. I didn't this is going to be harsh on Troy Deeney, um, and I don't think it's reflective of him because he had an injury. He came off and he had an ice pack on his leg. But when we played Watford, it didn't seem to me like there were a ton of people who were willing to run through a brick wall to make sure that Watford stayed in the Premier League. When actually stark contrast, you think about it, because when we played Burnley, I very much felt that Burnley... Um, particularly with that Tchaikovsky and a few of the others as well, they were willing to do whatever it took to get that win. There was real grit, real determination. They didn't deserve to win. We were better than them. But they, they won uh, because they had grit. And, and there's a lot to be said for having that in your team. And I feel with Suchek that we've got that. And he demonstrates it in, in everything he does, in in everything, in, in all the words he says and, the, and the, the amount of distance he runs, the, the goals he scores, the desire to be that to beat the guy into the box, to jump above the guy and head the ball in. The resilience against Chelsea to have a goal chalked off, a deserved goal, because let's be fair, right? <laughs> Mikel Antonio was lying on the floor having a kip. He wasn't in the way of the Chelsea goalkeeper, all right? That was a fair goal. It was a, a bona fide goal, as you would say, that Suchek scored against Chelsea. So to have the desire... Um, to not let your head drop, to not whinge to the referee constantly, to actually have something about your character and say, do you know what? <laughs> what a load of old rubbish. I'm, I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to go, do you know what? You chalk that goal off, I'm going to go and score again. That's what I'm doing. And for him to do that, it just shows so much about his character. I mean, if you've got that, you've got the character, you've got the desire, and you've got some footballing ability, the, the, the heading, the running, the tackling, the long shots... Then you've got a hell of a player there. And unless you are particularly fussy about how your goals are scored, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a midfielder that scores 
let, let's let's not let's say eight Premier League goals a season. Is a midfielder that scores eight Premier League goals a season because they are they're worth their weight in gold. Not many clubs have got those, by the way. I'd be interested to know the stats. How many midfielders score eight goals a season? So I think Suchek can. Does it hold more value if you can curl that ball in? If they're all long shots or wonder strikes, it probably does. It probably does mean it probably does mean your value is a little bit more. But actually, on the score sheet, whether you've headed it in or whether you've tapped it in, it doesn't matter. You've still got a midfielder who is a regular goal threat. And I think we've got that in Suchek. And quite frankly, I think we've got a bargain.